I'm David Brackey. I'm the Joe R. Engel Chair in the History of Christianity and a professor in the History Department. I study the history and literature of early Christianity from so from about Jesus to about the year 500. And uh, much of my research has been about Gnosticism and other ancient heresies. So I've been very interested in seeing kind of alternative ways of being Christian in the ancient world and researching what Christians other than the mainstream were like. One of the things that I am trying to say about early Christianity is that some of the groups like Gnostics and other heretics that people have tended to see as very separate from other Christians and so on were really part of Christianity in a very involved way and in that they were very instrumental in making Christianity what it is rather than some heretical offshoot that really didn't contribute to how Christianity came to be. One of the tasks when we are looking at ancient manuscripts and so on is to realize how people were thinking about these issues that heretics brought up and that monks were working on in the past and not just how we think about these things today. So we're very interested, I'm very interested in entering the thought world of ancient people and kind of getting out of just the way that we tend to think about this kind of stuff. For people interested in graduate education, Ohio State now may be one of the best places in the United States, especially to study uh, late antiquity, the period from about 200 to probably about 800. There are multiple folks here who are looking at religion in the ancient uh, Mediterranean world and into the Byzantine and medieval world. And uh, so it's an exciting place to be. And we have people in multiple units, not just history, that, that are engaged in that kind of work. Um, I've been lucky to be able to teach seminars that, for example, think about how to use saint lives in historical reconstruction, and I'm currently teaching a seminar on sex and gender in the ancient world. So I think we offer exciting courses for graduate students that bring together students from different areas of pre-modern Europe and the Mediterranean. One of the great things about studying late antiquity or um, Christianity or the religions of late antiquity at Ohio State is that history as a department and as a field is highly interdisciplinary. So we work closely with faculty and graduate students in other units, classics, Near Eastern studies, art history and the like. And uh, we all get together in a kind of group called the study of religion in the ancient Mediterranean world. And so we bring together all sorts of different approaches, uh, philology, social history, material history and so on to the study of this very important era of religious change. One of the things that um, uh, I think students learn, especially from my 2000 level history of his Christianity class, is how Christianity really isn't what we might call a Western religion. Uh, that is in its first, you know, seven or 800 years, uh, the weight of Christianity, most Christians actually lived in areas like Iraq and Iran and extended into China. And so one of the things that I want to help Christians, to uh, help students to see is that Christianity became a global religion very early and wasn't just a function of missionaries in the more modern period. Everything that you do in a history class has importance and relevance for what you might do in a career. I mean, one of the most important skills that we work on is how to read and see what people are saying and how to look behind a text and kind of see what might really be going on. And we also work a lot on communicating our ideas. So, um, you know, the skills that we learn in history classes about how to make an argument, how to persuade people, and so on, these are all skills that will benefit anyone in pretty much anything that they do. Probably the most popular class I teach is 2220, which is the introduction to the history of Christianity, um, because it's a great place for a student to start studying both history and Christianity, because we really don't assume you know anything. And, and you don't have to be a Christian, you don't have to have had any contact with Christianity, and we really start from Jesus and go to the present. We end up with televangelists and so forth and so on. So it's a, it's a fun class, and it's also a great way to learn about even just world history from about the year zero to now. One of the next um, research projects I'm working on is a translation and commentary on the Gospel of Judas, which was just discovered in 2006 and it presents an entirely different view of Judas, the apostles, and Jesus than what you find in uh, the New Testament Gospels. I think the most important reason that 
we should study history is that history lays out for us a kind of range of options for how humans have lived and how they have approached certain important problems in the past. And I think it therefore better equips us to think about our current situation and the future. I mean, it's, you know, a, a kind of cliche to say that we learn from history so that we won't repeat it, but I think we actually learn from history so that maybe we can sometimes do what people did in the past. And I think it really helps us to see why we're in the situation we're in, but it also gives us ways of looking at the options for acting in the future.